So this is a pretty decent clip, right? This is courtesy of the Friday Kid subreddit and it features Danny Brown talking to Tony Hinchcliffe about the issues that he has with comedians having hang out with a few of them because of his friendship with um, Joe because he basically has his podcast on Tom Segura's network and they're clearly friends and just generally it seems like he likes to hang around tough with guys and generally I still think Danny Brown may have one of the best comedy podcast debuts ever when he first appeared on flipping Joey Diaz the church of what's happening back right now back in the day that episode the first time he come on and maybe the second time were legitimately insane that's when nobody kind of had heard of Danny Brown in a podcasting platform way I think if you're a fan of his music and you kind of follow his career you know he always gives good interviews but I guess when he was around comedians and he got to basically be himself and kind of be silly and tell some of his awesome stories he came across amazing I guarantee to you please if you haven't got the time now or if you're looking for something to watch in the archives that's way funnier than anything you're going to see nowadays please check out danny brown's first appearances on joey diaz's the church of what's happening right now back when he had lee say on the show it's genuinely one of the best episodes you're ever going to hear ridiculously incredible really really funny anyway he appeared on his own podcast talking to tony hinchcliffe about the comedy scene and just how you know snaky and backstabby comedians are and it's hilarious because just the entire time please watch tony hinchkiss face as he squirms um hearing danny brown describe how him and his friends act you know behind each other's back essentially in the green room it's absolutely incredible maybe a second as i get loaded up here boom let's get up on the screen so you guys can see what i'm talking about when i hang around y'all niggas it's no respect. Uh uh. Coming to kill Tony's or when comedians are come through and <laughs> bro, these niggas talk about each other like it's I've seen comedians like talk shit about other comedians that they didn't even know that I knew that comedian. Yeah, exactly. Which is the worst shit ever. I might talk shit about a nigga jokes. And this and that, but it's all about like financial shit. Uh -huh. They'd be like, this nigga broke. Oh, really? <laughs> I swear to, I seen it. All oh, been funded from your shit, bro. Being backstage at Kill Tony, bro. Comedians are the worst people to even have like a, a emotional connection with. These niggas, they gonna use it for a joke, or they gonna talk shit about you to another comedian. <laughs> what? I swear to God, there's the good set. ones. There's good ones. Some of the best people I know are comedians. There's a couple of the worst too. Y'all niggas just be talking shit about niggas backstage. I don't fuck with it, bro. Which is why, which is why, which is why I don't buy any of this nonsense that they say about helping each other out and being happy for each other's success. And it's also why I've always said I always was, will have respect for and think Rogan is a top dude. Because I think despite his flaws, I think if anyone else in comedy had Rogan's power, had Rogan's influence, had Rogan's respect whatever it may be, they would be legitimate tyrants. Some of you may think Rogan's a tyrant. I don't necessarily think so. I think he goes above and beyond to help people out. And he's clearly one of the more chiller type of guys in the scene, despite how wealthy and successful he is. He still kind of tries to act irregular and still tries to help people out in a, in a weird way. But I think these other guys who aren't as successful as him, who get a little bit of fame, who maybe have you know delusional ideas of how talented they actually are if they were given the same level of fame and influence that rogan had they'd be insane because the truth of it is behind the scenes all of these guys for some reason i don't know why it is this particular you know genre or this particular field of entertainment this particular sector of entertainment for some reason it brings out the bitch the bitch made energy in most men you've never seen more men gossip about other men than in comedy maybe i contribute to some of it also but i think just as a as like a viewer from the outside watching it as really a tv show i wouldn't really view this as gossip in any way i just view this as kind of you know laughing at these guys who say and do silly things but i think behind the scenes the stuff that these guys say to each other must be brutal must be brutal especially when you think about the stuff that bgl revealed about brendan now i didn't like it i still don't like it i still think bgl is an absolute turbo douche but he did illustrate how these guys actually speak about each other behind the scenes because bgl was the one who revealed that brendan allegedly had been saying stuff about josh wolf or josh wolf as he likes to call him 
and basically making disparaging comments about Josh's inability to sell tickets or to, you know, do crazy tours or whatever it may be. And it's really, really, um, you know, disgusting to think about that if that's true, because Josh Wolf was one of the only people that really stood by Brendan and Brian to a certain extent when they were going through what they were going through. When Brian was accused of rape and the podcast was in turmoil and Brendan was trying to find co-hosts to kind of hold it down and he didn't like the black guys and Chappelle and Malik clearly and he wanted to kind of have more white energy on there. He decided to just reach out to flipping Josh Wolf and he kind of went out of his way to stand by them even though maybe he maybe needed it more than they did, who knows. But still he put his reputation on the line because he's kind of well liked and stuff and held them held them down and even though he held them down and supported them and was on the show and made it somewhat entertaining and added another perspective to it which probably brendan got bored of after a period of time because he hasn't been back yet in a while maybe because live somewhere else who knows but the thanks he gets for it is what is allegedly supposedly brendan says behind the scenes hey this guy doesn't sell tickets he's not a draw and all that malarkey these guys are awful 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 no respect to anybody no respect they talk about each other all the time they're always pocket watching also can you just imagine the amount of pocket watching these guys do he or she doesn't deserve that i should be on way more blah 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 when the reality is all of their specials suck with a, with with small with a small exception really the reality is they're all getting overpaid really if you think about it really if you think about it they're all getting overpaid which may explain why a few of them are so hell-bent on making sure they're like touring marketing flipping beast because really on the strength of their work on their skill of their comedy on their supposed talent they are lacking but a lot of them can work hard they can do a lot of podcasts they can go and tour a lot they can make a lot of merch they can do lots of appearances and stuff that maybe is them working hard to maybe justify their payments but when you look at talent for talent skill for skill legacy for legacy you know like it's not that great the specials are kind of lacking so they're all being overpaid but still they're all hating on each other's money and what they're getting paid they all have their own locked in audiences that kind of love what they do and will ride to ride with them until the world's fall off but they're still hating other people why there's a land full of plentiful opportunities there in flipping stand-up from corporate gigs to commercial stuff to going on tour to cruise boats or whatever endless opportunities for them to make money but they still go out of their way go out of their way to flip and insult and ridicule each other absolutely heinous and just don't get me started on what it must be like to be a woman in that industry don't even get me started just imagine how they these guys treat their partners how they treat their wives and girlfriends can you imagine what it must be like coming up as a comedian and being a woman in that scene can you imagine especially in la what it's like what you have to put up with <laughs> especially if you kind of lean into your sexuality or you lean into your looks a little bit can you imagine the comments you'll get from some of these guys but they're okay with you know Bert Kreischer taking off his t-shirt every two seconds but if you dare to have a mature bit of cleavage or it's accentuate some of your flipping assets they're gonna have something to say if you have some hacky type of jokes that are maybe a little bit too you know um I don't know gross for them they have something to say but then they have loads of other friends that do the same sort of thing so I love that Danny Brown called it out I love that Tony Hinchcliffe was squirming and I even forgot the part where Danny Brown is basically saying no your actual show is where I heard the most comics kind of being bitchy about each other which makes sense because it's you know it's Kill Tony it's a show for comedians basically <coughs> sorry what's that especially wannabe bloody hell that was a weird burp especially wannabe comedians but yeah um big up danny brown he's absolute legend for calling it out and big up tony hinchcliffe for squirming and adding to the flipping comedic timing of that entire flipping exchange i absolutely loved it i absolutely loved every single part of it and i can't wait to see more